along the Yarra River. And I think I was looking over at Flinders Street Station and watching the trains come and go. So I kind of like drew a couple of lines on a bit of paper and sort of thought about like drawing connections for the trains to follow. Um, and then it kind of just grew from there, I guess. But it was a real breakthrough for us as a company. The art style was fantastic, like it looked like a really nice game. The menus were all lovely and bouncy and you know, and the gameplay was fantastic as well. But to have 4.5 million people play our game is phenomenal and you couldn't have expected that. Like 190 years have been spent playing Train Conductor, that's around the world. So it's around 80,000 people a day and so it just feels great that our game has somehow managed to kill four people. <laughs> <laughs> we got the idea to start the Vox Legends in 2008 when we entered a 48-hour game making competition. So we made a really cool game called Melanauts. It's basically you're a spaceman on a faraway planet which has like rapidly cycling seasons and your mission in life is to plant and pick up watermelons. We were kind of all between jobs at the end at the start of 2009 so we decided to all move to Melbourne and actually do it for real. We sort of just came up with an idea. We didn't think about it too much but it was, it was Dolphin Hero. This was a game where you had to like control a dolphin around and eat all this cake and save people. It was okay, it was kind of cute, but it didn't really work on the iPhone market. I think we were earning about a dollar a day, so... Yeah. <laughs> and that was just because we had a couple friends. Yeah. <laughs> Once we have an idea, we immediately try and get that built so we can play it. We go through a phase of making the dirtiest, cheapest prototypes. You can often tell when someone likes a game because even though it's ugly and it may be made with cutout cards that you just hand-created, they're interested and you can see that they're curious and they want to they want to solve the puzzle. Making a great game that will be a top 10 game in iTunes is actually a bit of a black box. What we do know though is that if we focus on quality, if we make sure it's an original concept, and if we make sure people can understand how to play the game right from the get-go, it also needs a certain kind of X factor that really sort of lifts it away from all the other games and that's almost impossible to define. If you look at the top 10 games that are there right now, very few of those would have been made for less than at least half a million to several million dollars now. It's like it's still definitely achievable for indie independence to operate there. But um, yeah, it's sort of the, the landscape's shifting. Throughout the start of this year, we've been working uh, towards finding the new game. Well, the most exciting idea that we've put in front of people that people can't stop playing is this lumberjack game where you're wandering around in the forest and you have to cut down these trees. It's a, it's a puzzle game that kind of feels a little bit like Sudoku. We see the Voxel Agents heading in the direction of continuing to make fantastic small games that everyone can play, that we polish right to the end, and continuing to explore new ideas. Because ultimately it's so rewarding when you have people playing your game.